What's up, guys? Mega Fonzie here. I am Singapore Day 3. I'm with one of our fantastic casters, Idra. Uh, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate the interview. Uh, how have you enjoyed the weekend so far? I spent fun. I got here kind of late, uh, like 1 a.m. the night before I had to start casting. So that was kind of stressful, but the games have been exciting enough to keep me awake. We've had a lot of good games. Watching Scarlet go through, I think, has been my favorite part so far. But it's been a really good weekend. We still have the finals to go. Yeah, sweet. Let's talk about Scarlet a bit. She looked really good in those games today against two awesome Terrans, uh, Dream and Bomber. She obviously had a bit of a rivalry with Bomber, but like, if you can knock out those two players, I don't think there's any Terrans left that are quite of that caliber. Do you think she can go the whole way tomorrow? I don't know. Bomber, he he's a great player and he's really good to beat, but he kind of messed up. If anything, I think her games against Dream were a bit more impressive because that was just her completely outplaying him, whereas Bomber kind of beat himself to an extent. Um, and I think the biggest Terran stepping stone for her might actually be MVP. Most people wouldn't look at him and say, you know, he's one of the stronger Terrans here. But he has that really nicely done mech style. And I was talking to her after the games, just asking her about the game against Bomber, the mech one on Akalon. And she basically said she doesn't know how to beat mech. She just kind of made some units and got lucky. Uh, so that would be pretty scary because MVP looked really clean with that mech timing. MVP and then the Protosses, even Squirtle, but Hero in particular. I think that'll be a problem for her. Well, let's talk mech then for a second, because mech's kind of one of those things that goes through phases of people say, oh, it's no good, it's no good, and then a tournament like this comes along where you get MVP, you get happy. They're both busting it out like, in all different forms. Do you think mech's finally here to stay? Is it a viable style like all the time against Zerg, or is it kind of is it going to come back and go away like all the time? On most maps, I think it's always viable, but I'm not sure if it'll ever really get too much attention. Just because it's the kind of style that you really have to put a lot of time into learning before it's going to pay off. It's pretty easy to figure out the marine train kind of thing. Like, it's more about execution, just being fast. So it's the kind of thing you can just mindlessly practice and get better at. But with mech, you really need to figure everything out to be good. You have to have all the timings down to an art or down to a science. Uh, you have to scan everything perfectly. You have to be just very aware of anything that could happen. Because you're playing most of the early game on a knife's edge. Like, you could die to any number of things if you're not quite ready for them. So you have to have that all figured out. And then you have to be very, very patient and play a ton of really boring games to actually get good at it. It's just not a fun style. It's very slow, very defensive. And if you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to play that all out and figure that all out, it's going to be incredibly powerful. But so few Terrans just seem willing to do that to invest the time necessary. I'm not sure if we're ever going to see a big, I don't know, maybe MVP doing it here, maybe if he wins on the back of it or something, that'll inspire everyone to learn it. But I, I think it's more Terrans laziness than the weakness of mech that, that holds it back. All right, so you mentioned the boringness of mech, and obviously there's kind of two camps. There's the guys that say, uh, I want mech to be viable because I want Terran to have options. Then there's the other camp that says, well, mech just sucks. It's boring to watch. It leads to boring games. Do you think it's better for the game if mech doesn't work? Yes, um, especially the kind of mech. I, I don't know. In Brood War, mech just felt more tactical. You had Widow Mines tanks were, worked differently. You didn't have planetaries. Static defense wasn't quite as strong. You had bigger maps. It was just more about playing smart and not smarting your opponent. In StarCraft 2, it's about staying alive, and staying alive isn't too hard to do. You also have that endgame air death ball that feels pretty invincible. Like, if Terran can get to, especially now with the 3-3 upgrades transferring, if they can get to Ravens, Vikings, and a couple of BCs, I don't know how to beat that, short of them attacking into a bunch of static defense. So, yeah, it feels like it really just encourages Terran to sit and not die and get to that death ball instead of actively fighting for space, fighting for expansions, trying to deny resources, which is what an RTS is supposed to be. So, yeah, mech as it exists in StarCraft 2 feels really un rts and unfun, and I don't think it should be encouraged as a viable option. Okay, so you've been like a, a caster for a while now. You've stopped your full-time playing days. I guess it gives you a chance to watch a lot more StarCraft than you used to. So... Uh, that being said, do you get like a chance to like have a different view on balance, and a different perspective on the game than you used to? Obviously, you were very outspoken as a Zerg player, but now that you kind of see a lot more matchups, a lot more of the you know, how different players play, do you think you know, who do you think strongest right now? Is it still Protoss? I, I do think it's Protoss, and I'm still biased. I still play a good amount. I still play mainly Zerg, and I still get pissed off when I lose. So that bias is going to be there. But just looking at the results, looking at gameplay, talking to other pro gamers, I think it's a pretty objective opinion that Protoss beats Zerg. And Zerg vs. Terran is kind of up in the air. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say I've gotten too much fairer. I think it's, I still have a fair amount of Zerg bias. Yeah, all right. So uh, next year we got big changes in WCS, obviously. We got a few spots for NA players up for grabs. 
Like, even though you're not a full-time player anymore, are you going to give those a crack? If it were truly region locked, if they were like, no more Koreans, we're sorry it's unfair, but you guys are out, then I think it would be like too tempting. It would be like too much money, potentially easy money for me to just pass up on. But one way or the other, I wouldn't really commit to practicing too much. And with the amount of Koreans still left in, and more Koreans coming in every season with the two wild card spots, I don't think it's really worth it. I would much rather cast the tournament than play it. So I, I, I will not be playing, no. All right. So like with the changes they did make, obviously there's a lot of Koreans still in there. There's a partial region lock. This year we've seen no foreigners win a tournament. Scarlet could do it today or tomorrow. We've still got Naniwa alive in Dreamhack, I think, but it's looking pretty grim. Do you think these changes, however small they may be, do you think they'll encourage foreigners to kind of take the next step? And do you think it will make any meaningful difference about you know, foreigners pushing that top level? It's better for sure. Whether it goes far enough, of course, that's the question everyone's trying to figure out. I kind of don't think it will, especially because you got those, I don't know. Um, it is opening up Challenger League a bit, and that's the biggest problem because that's where the up-and-comers kind of make their debut. But at the same time, they're not going to be broadcasting Challenger League, at least current, according to current plans, which means it's not as valuable to be in Challenger League. Your team's not going to care if you're not on TV. So you're not really making a name for yourself yet at that point, which is kind of the entire point, is to like let the mid-level North American players give them something to practice for and then reward them for getting there, not reward them for winning a national tournament. Because those rewards are already there. They don't need that. It's the Challenger League that's actually really important. And they're not broadcasting that. And the Koreans are still there to like impede them from actually getting to the highest level. So I don't think it's really going to help too much competition-wise. I, I still think the biggest problem, or the biggest change, is the fact that they're pulling back on the broadcasting schedule, so there will be less competition for both personal streams and third-party tournaments. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Idra, for the interview. I appreciate it. Do you have any last shout-outs you want to make? Uh, thanks to my sponsor, TT Esports. Check them out at thermaltech.com. They sponsor a bunch of big esports personalities and players, so they deserve a lot of our thanks. And then otherwise, I'm actually casting a bunch of tournaments coming up. I'll have Shoutcraft America on December 7th and 8th with Total Biscuit, obviously Total Biscuit's event. Um, and that's brought to you by Ting.com. And then I'll actually be down in Louisiana for a local LAN tournament that a lot of good players are attending. That'll be December 14th that weekend, so be sure to check that out as well. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. That'll be it for us today. Enjoy the rest of the games this weekend. And, yeah, that's it. Mega Fonzie signing out.